Welcome back to the Patterson Podcast. We've got a great guest today. She's made really fantastic progress with her rheumatoid <laughs> arthritis uh, over the last couple of years, and she's got plenty to share on this topic. She is a wonderful community forum member who helps many other people and has lots of strategies that she uh, is very good at, at, uh, at explaining, and uh, we hope that she's able to share a lot of those today. So welcome, Ellen. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Happy yeah. to be here. And if people are watching this YouTube video, they'll appreciate the uh, the wonderful, colorful background you've got there in your room. Uh, oh, yeah. And if you're listening to this on the podcast uh, as a recording, then uh, just picture a lovely room with lots of creative, uh, we've got drums in the background and a, a lovely couch that looks like it's had a lot of loving and uh, some some nice painting. So uh, it's a great space. Oh, yeah. Yes, it, it certainly is. Now, <laughs> Now, we're here today to talk about rheumatoid arthritis. You and I have got to know each other uh, online, um, and this is the first time we've uh, communicated face-to-face, although you were put part, I remember, of an, an early sort of uh, coaching call that I did uh, about a year ago, I remember. Um, yeah. But, but now, um, now we're going to hear uh, about, your, about your journey and uh, what you've been through over the years and, then, and hear about how far you've come since you've made a lot of changes uh, that you were able to, mm-hmm. uh, to implement. So... Where did it all start? What what happened? Ah, it started in about Thanksgiving, nineteen ninety eight. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> long quite a time while. ago. Yeah, and I started getting this feeling in my right elbow. It was so weird. It was like pain, and and then it it just got worse. And it's like, and I worked for Superior Court, of Sonoma County, so I was working, and then. Um, we went on vacation for a very short vacation for Thanksgiving and I could not, I had excruciating pain in both shoulders. It was so bad. It scared me a lot. I was very scared and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't hardly move. And my husband put me in showers, the only thing we could think of to do. And then it got a little better. And then I had to wait, you know, I went and saw, I was seeing a chiropractor at the time. Right. <laughs> And she couldn't quite read the blood results when they came back, but my sedimentation rate was very high. And so then I finally got into a rheumatologist. It took, you know, over six weeks. And there was a guard dog manager who would not let me get in there. And I, I was so sick that I, I really thought I was going to die. I really did. And my husband went and stood in that office and stared at the lady and said, you've got to get her in here. And she finally did, finally got in. Was it just that and much uh, backlog with the number of people trying to see this doctor? I don't know. Mm, <laughs> when she, when the doctor finally got me in, she said, "We don't let this happen to people." It's like, well, you just did let it happen to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> and then I, then I got on shots, methotrexate shots, and then prednisone, of course, and and that went on for a while, and. <clears throat> At first, the prednisone didn't work, you know. <laughs> I still had the excruciating pain, you know. But then, you know, it finally started settling down, and I just, I'd gotten off work, so I was off work for 10 months, and they really wanted me to come back, but I didn't. I didn't go, I didn't go back. I, I needed to get well again. <laughs> so um, I kind of fought a battle with that, too, you know, with the HR or whatever. Sure. And then, um, you know, I... Well, it's just like for all you people out there, you know, who know what it's like to have RA. It was it was really hard. It was it's scary, you know. And then just giving myself shots. That was like I was taught to give the shot in the arm, and I couldn't even do it, you know. And luckily, I had a friend who had done shots, so I started giving myself the shot in the thigh, which was so much better, right. <laughs> so much easier, you know. And, and the friend and I would laugh because I never wanted to do it, and it would take me some, one time. It took 20 minutes to put that shot, get the shot in. Just building <laughs> I just up. Just couldn't do it, yeah. you know. <laughs> and then we'd laugh because it was so pathetic how long it took me, you know. So you know, this went on for. Finally, got on methotrexate pills, and then I got on Plaquenil and had giant heartbeats. So I got off of that and got on sulfasalazine, which I was on for years. So I mean, this is like I've had this disease for 16 and a half years. So been a long time yeah and you know it it hasn't really gotten to the point where I I had like two remissions one one one-year remission 
a two-month remission, and maybe a three-week remission. Hmm. And I just haven't been able to shake it. And, I, and then, then my blood pressure went up. <laughs> At 55, my blood pressure went up. I thought, oh, good, good Lord, now I'm having this. You know? <laughs> so uh, got on the blood pressure medicines. I didn't like that at all. I really didn't. Then I had problem with esophagus problems or something. And, and it's like I wanted a way out of this. I wanted to find the way so out. So I, the first book I read was Dr. Bernard, Dr. Um, and read his book and started thinking about, I went, you know, just ate plants for a while, but it wasn't enough. You know, it wasn't enough what I was doing with when I was on his. I had like a piece of chocolate here and there. He, I think he was big on like low oil, but you could possibly have a little bit. He wasn't totally clear about it. So I kind of got to the end of my line. I wanted to get off all this medicine. And I was sick of being sick. It's like, how long was this going to last? You know? yeah. <laughs> it could yeah. last forever as far as I was concerned, you know. <laughs> so, and, and then I didn't exercise. I wasn't a big exerciser. I mean, I was a walker, and but I basically, you know, my elbows started to bend. You know, you know, like they weren't straight anymore. I mean, I had problem every once in a while with either my hand or my or my back, or it's like uh, just like ongoing problems. And so, mm. but starting to eat the plants, and I was on the right track. And well, then, well, hang on a sec. Let's not forget yeah, your yeah. knees. Tell us about your knees. How were they? Oh, it would, they would swell up even when I was on methotrexate sometimes. Like, I've had, when I got off all the methotrexate the first time, I think I was had the disease for one year, and then I got in remission for one year, and then the, the knee swelling came back in full force just after one year. It was just, like, so bad, I couldn't even walk. You know, I could walk, like, these tiny little baby steps. <laughs> back on prednisone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Which I didn't want to be on, you know. All right. Bad, well, you know. well, the well anyway, the list, listeners have heard. Listeners yeah, are probably thinking, help. "Wow, where That's where right. is this going to go?" <laughs> you know, this, it sounds really <laughs> terrible, and everyone's probably uh, been able to relate to it so far in some way. Yeah, um, yeah. But boy, do we have a turning point coming up in this story. So tell us then, after you from Dr. Neil Bernard's uh, book, you uh, you read that and you started your education process. Yeah, all, I got all his books, okay. every one of them. Okay, yep. Uh, he's great on the topic of uh, diabetes. He's got a great book, hasn't he? Yeah, about that was the one diabetes. I think I got first, maybe. Yeah, that's the one yeah. I recommend to anyone who has any form of, of diabetes should read Dr. Neil Bernard's reversing diabetes book it's a it's a it's a great yeah. book and it's a very um it, it dovetails very nicely with the patterson program so if anyone's on the patterson program with a d form of diabetes then uh there's nothing to uh, concern yourself with because they're so similar so okay so after dr bernard's <laughs> book what happened next well my blood pressure was still you know it was it was stable now but it's i you know i just had this gigantic desire to get well i can't tell you Ever since starting Neil Bernard's books, I, I had such a profound sense that I'm going to get well. I just, and I was on that path and I was going to find a way to get well. So the next thing I did was, you know, and, and meanwhile, I had inflammation happening. Knees, my knees swelled up every once in a while. And when I was still on methotrexate, nobody knew why. I had MRI and nothing, you know. <laughs> At least I didn't, I didn't have hardly any damage. So that was good. So um, I thought, I'm still, this is not enough, Dr. Bernard. And I saw him in person. He was wonderful, but wasn't enough. So I thought, I'm, so I emailed Dr. McDougall. I thought, I'm going to email Dr. McDougall. And we, maybe he won't answer, but sure enough, right away he answered me. <laughs> and he said, just go, you know, gluten-free, no soy, no soy, no oil, you know, just do that. You know, just because I was trying his elimination diet and failing pretty much and went on his forum thing, couldn't figure it out, anything about that. It was too hard. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he was very kind. So then I just, I said, you know, I, I was going to do his program. So he said, okay, I'll see you, you know, in June or whatever. So I did his 10 day program, June 7th, 2013 for 10 days. Okay, Took so me off all the blood. Yeah. We're going back about uh, just over so just under three years ago now, this, yeah, this is years. where we're at now. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, uh, and sister set the scene so everyone can picture this. You're currently on sulfasalazine. You're on tablet methotrexate. Uh, prednisone? Yeah. 
Pregnazone? Uh, prednisone, I think I got off finally in 2010. Okay. I, I was on it for 18 months. It was horrific for me. I got shingles. It's like, I'm telling you, to me, it's like a, the devil drug. It's evil, I think. <laughs> I just, yeah. I finally got off of it. It took everything I had to get off of that drug. Everything inside of my, you had to have such strong, you have to have such strong desire to get off that because you have to beat your own mind. Your mind doesn't want you to get off of it. You know, it's like, it's just like a, it's like being in an Alfred Hitchcock movie, like Virgo or something. You just can't get out of it. <laughs> yeah. Can't get out of it. You know, it's like, it's anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, I, Not know, on that I know you, uh, <laughs> you, you, you've uh, documented the, the strategies that you've used to get off that drug really nicely uh, in our forum. Yeah. And it's been very useful for people. Um, that was so, tough. so yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. I'm so thankful that I never went on that drug. I think one of the most yeah. fortuitous okay. things that ever happened to me, uh, with this disease is that my rheumatologist does not recommend that people have pregnazone. So it's not an option for, for him. Isn't in that his good? Yeah. Wow. That's and see, really good. by taking pregnazone out of the picture, it just makes everything, uh, I just think it just makes everything easier because you don't have the option. So you, you have to either get onto a different disease modifying drug or you have to look at a mm -hmm. biologic or hello have a think about it you have to look at what you're eating and you have to exercise like uh, yeah. you're training for 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 some kind of event um and and if you do those last two things as you came to discover um you know you get <laughs> you get the results that you could you know without the side effects of the pregnazone because the damage mm -hmm. that pregnazone can do to your gut is worse than anything any food you could ever eat um, yeah, so. and look what it did to my, I have now an iceberg in my eye, it's a little white calcium deposit and it rubs against the cornea, which is the outer part of your eye, and it's like, <laughs> I have, now I have eye, that's going to be the rest of my life, eye drops, I gel at night, it's like, jeez, mm, yeah. so I advise you, if you can get off of it, people, get mm. off of it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, let's talk about how to substitute <laughs> pregnazone, because that's the thing, right? It's yeah. all good and well to say, let's get off the drugs, but but it's hard without something to substitute it with. So yeah, uh, if you can substitute something and get pain relief without the side effects, then uh, that's that's what we ought to be doing. And you are getting to that yeah. in your story because you went to see Dr. McDoodle and do, do, Doodle, Dr. McDoodle. <laughs> <laughs> He'd love that. That's okay. Yeah, he wouldn't mind, I don't think. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> And you were about to do his 10-day program. So thanks for yeah. uh, thanks for uh, continuing your story at that point. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, my blood pressure was like 152 over 90. I mean, of course, as soon as he got me off of the metoprolol and the amlodipine, it went back up. You know, it's like, and he said, well, it's okay, you know. And, and I cried in front of him, and it, I think that was hard for him. But, <laughs> and he kept saying, well, <clears throat> you know, your damage is done because I have one, this hand, and you could tell it's like, it's not quite the same as the other hand on one of them. It's got like a hump, uh -huh. hump uh -huh. on the right hand. <clears throat> so, um, but anyway, I got through that and just, I was really, you know, stoked about doing, continuing along, you know, and, and getting well. And, and how did you feel at the end of that 10 days? I felt really good. Not really good. I felt really in, empowered. Oh, you, you felt good. Yep. Yeah, and I had learned all about heart disease and how eating, you know, animal foods can just, you know, mess up your heart, mess up your arteries and cause that whole thing, you know, to happen where you get a heart attack. It's like, <laughs> so I was basically now heart attack proof. Yep. I didn't need the blood pressure medicines. Of course, I went back to my family doctor and he, and it went, my blood pressure was 160 over 70, probably because I was stressed out about seeing him saying I wasn't on anymore and so he said well he put me right back on him which you know you can't be on him when you're eating plant-based whole foods no oil you know <laughs> unless you're naturally have high blood pressure which I really I don't think I do so then I found Dr. Clapper just by sheer luck I think or maybe Dr. McDougal mentioned him or whatever and so I made an appointment with him immediately because I wanted to get off those blood pressure medicines. And I'd heard so many good things about him. And went and saw him. It was like, best thing I ever did. He's like such a nice man, supportive. He listened to me. I mean, he took the time to listen to me. He, he took me off the blood pressure medicines again. 
he took my blood pressure. It wasn't that, you know, and he, he's worked with me ever since. And I can now email him at any time and he emails me back. I mean, um, I think, and also he, I think be, he, I did as a four day fast because in, um, I know I have to, I'm skipping around a little bit, but in, um, December 2014, I'd gotten off all methotrexate again because I thought two years of McDougal, I'm, I'm getting off of these drugs, you know, and inflammation came raging back. So, so I did the four day fast at home under Dr. Clapper and all the inflammation went away, all of it. So I knew, you know, like you said, you're on the right track. You could tell it's the f food or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that I think is a good point where I can make some comments there. Um, after the yeah. event that Dr. Clapper and I put on here in Sydney, uh, recently he and his wife invited us over a few days later to spend some just some casual time oh, yeah. with them uh, in Bondi near the beach there and um, mm. he and I just uh, were just engrossed in conversation and two hours <laughs> two hours passed in about five minutes it seemed like and oh, then cool. my, my wife's so grabbing me saying honey we've got to go we've got to go, go. <laughs> uh, but what we were talking about is um, all of the uh, you know all the in intricacies of uh, of of this disease and uh, um, he asked me actually he said after I watched your TED talk he uh, and he showed his wife and his wife uh, uh, had just watched it before we came over and he said you know how did you continue to persevere year after year when it's just so difficult to reverse this disease and I said because every time I stopped eating the pain went away and I just knew mm. that it was my gut and if every time you stop eating the pain goes away you know where the problem is and so you just have to mm. simply keep addressing the problem and I mean it, it seems yeah. commonsensical to me that if you stop eating pain goes away okay well you know the problems in the gut and so you got to fix it I mean it only makes sense to want to fix a yeah. problem I mean Problems are there to be fixed, aren't they? I'm so glad you figured that out because I would I don't think I would have thought of it. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> well Well anyway, we had a uh, we had a great chat and um and he is our um, recommended doctor for anyone who's listened to this podcast who yeah. who who has rheumatoid arthritis or a different inflammatory disease or just has a loved one who needs uh, the right advice and the right support. Uh, Dr. Clapper does Skype calls, so it doesn't matter where you are in the world. Contact uh, True North Health Medical Center and uh, organize a Skype call with Dr. Clapper, and he will give you the right advice without um, uh, confusing the message that uh, that uh, that I put out there and that Ellen and I are discussing today about a a plant-based diet and, uh, and and lots of exercise. So, uh, mm -hmm. where where are we up to then, Ellen? Well, I want to hear some good news. You've just dropped the bombshell that you got off some drugs, but then uh, you also had to get back on some. Oh yeah. Tell us when it yeah. all started to really start to turn around. Oh well, it's let's see. I've got my little list here too. Okay. I don't think I need it. <laughs> no, I don't think you'll need it. Just in just in general terms. Okay, well, I started your, I don't know how I found you, but by God, I did. It's like, I just, because I still wasn't, still wasn't getting the results I wanted from McDougal. I just, like you people out there that are on McDougal, yeah, he's, it's great, but it's not quite, en wasn't enough for me. So I found you somehow. I thought, God, this is like the best thing that ever happened. So start, you know, bought your book, read the whole book, you know, got a discount, got on your forum, and it's been great. I mean, and then I, I was, you know, confused at first because, you know, it's really hard to figure out, you know, if the food is causing the swelling or what, you know, but like you pointed out again and again, I was at the beginning of the program and there's no way I, anything could really possibly happen yet, I don't think, <laughs> but for me, it was that, it was that first Bikram yoga class, May 17th. Uh, 2015. It's like I didn't want to go to Bikram Yoga. I thought, why should I do that? You know, it's like I'm not. I mean, I used to play soccer. I was like, real, like an amateur athlete. But that was when I was, you know, 25 to 40 years old. <laughs> yes, I was kind of rough back then. But 
Anyway, Bikram Yoga, I thought, oh, no. I, so you kept pushing me on it. He goes, well, just try it. Just try it. And I thought, oh, oh okay. So I said, <laughs> I'm going to just go down there and try it because Clint said I have to. And maybe, you know, maybe, may, just maybe it'll make a difference and I'll get better. So, my God, that first class was the hardest thing. It was so hot. It was so extremely hot. And the lower, luckily I got this teacher named Lori because I was kind of afraid of the yoga teacher because of the Yelp interviews. You know, the Yelp reviews weren't right. that great, a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought, I don't want to get him. John, you know. <laughs> so... Um, that's funny. Made it through the first class and made it through the first class and then I went again and made it through the second class. It's like pretty soon, you know, the knee swelling. And I you know, I, I like when I look back, I've never had too much pain. I'm just maybe I don't know why, but it's never been pain. It's always been swelling with me with my RA. I mean at first mm. when I was first sick, I had phenomenal pain. But, you know, it's basically just been maybe here and there I have pain because something happens, but all in all, it's swelling. Well, my point is that the Bikram Yoga, it's my right knee started to go down a little bit. But it would only go down right after class for about two hours, and then it would come right back. Like the next morning, I wake up, there it was again. Mm -hmm. But it was like the beginning. It was the beginning of getting better. It was, and it took. It wasn't, I don't know if it would have happened without the Bikram Yoga. I really don't because, I mean, I was walking. I was doing this step <clears throat> up and down with a, weight, a five-pound weight vest because Dr. Clapper said I needed to do that to build up my bones because I had osteopenia, you know, <laughs> that lovely thing to get. So Bikram Yoga has been difference between night and day with me. I, It's like I am now stronger. I'm more flexible. I couldn't pick up my little baby granddaughter, I mean, I have three three girls, you know, and two boys, but I couldn't pick them up, you know, and now, no problem, I can pick that girl up, Savannah up so easily, it's like nothing, you know. It's so I amazing. Up, you know, 18, bound, 18 pound bag of potatoes, pretty much no sweat, you know, and it's like, I'm so much more flexible, and it's like a total miracle, so thank you. I can't tell you, I'm going to cry, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I really appreciate your help. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And, uh, you know, everything you've done, all the effort that you've put in. Um, because I'm like rock solid. Yeah. What we're going to talk about you next uh, is, uh, <laughs> is the discipline it takes to go through that. Because it's one thing. You know how many people that I tell to do Bikram Yoga who actually mm -hmm. go and do it? Um, you know, it's the mm -hmm. whole lead, to, lead the horse to water thing. Um, it... it you know, all I can do is, is suggest it to people, but you're one of the few people that actually went out and did it, and then one of the even fewer people who've stuck with it, and stuck with it yeah. to the extent that your results and your life now is so incredibly uh, improved it's like as a result. It's 100% turnaround, and, you know, I've done 173 classes. I don't, I'm never going to stop going, I don't think. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not going to stop. I'm about the same age as the yoga teacher, John. I'm like two years older. So, I mean, we're both going to get there. <laughs> no, it's, it's amazing because um, yeah. I remember when you started to, uh, to go and then oh. your, your momentum was, uh, was, was keeping you there. And then it was around about 90 classes. And you did those in maybe only four or five months. I mean, it was... It was, it was, it was yeah, four times a week is my goal, you know. <laughs> yeah. Which and, is what uh, I did most of the time. <laughs> and you went from having these swollen knees that you'd had, what, probably for a decade? Six or? months. So, oh, no, yeah, they'd come and yeah. go. But uh, they, they'd this come time it was six months. Right, right. And now you haven't had... How long has it been since you've noticed swelling in your knees? Oh my God! Well, it's been you know it's been quite a while. Yeah. They w the swelling went away. I think it. Um, I think it was class one or day one hundred two. Well, here it is day three sixty one or something three sixty two. I mean, it's been a really long time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So good. I part, mean, I've, good part of a year, and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, and. What was fascinating, if anyone's sort of thinking, oh, but maybe it's going to come back. Now, listen to what actually happened, and I shouldn't right. step on your story too much, but we 
witnessed as people who were paying attention to your journal and uh, commenting on your journal in the forum and, and watching your updates and stuff, that yeah. the swelling went down bit by bit by bit right. by bit by bit. It wasn't yeah. that, you know, it, it happened in a way that you would expect the body to heal. They're going through a healing process, mm -hmm. you know, slight improvements week to week, incremental um you know reductions in swelling after another class and then another class mm -hmm. and i remember you were saying look i've woken up this morning the swelling's not there but i've just gone i'm just about to do yoga and it's just starting to come back a bit but then the yoga got rid of it again mm -hmm. and then it felt like yeah. that the yoga got on top of it and never allowed it, it to did. reappear before the next class and then it was just gone it, ex it totally accelerated. Mm. I, it must be like 100% acceleration. And now Catherine is doing that. Catherine on our forum. I mean, she's like, just like me. That's exactly what happened to me. I'm just hoping that it just continues for her. <laughs> I'm sure she will. We'll make sure she listens to this uh, this oh, yeah. episode and hears your, uh, your story. Um, so we're going to cover a lot about Bikram Yoga in the next uh, next part of this two-part series. We're going to have you back and we're going to get John, your yoga teacher, yeah. on the call. And that's going to be a lot of fun. And he's going to oh, yeah. give us an, a, a teacher's perspective of, of Bikram. And I don't care if people think they've already heard the Bikram message and they they uh, they think, yeah, 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 but, uh, but there's not one near me or something because we just got to make sure that people understand the power of that particular class and that particular exercise. In fact, you mentioned oh, yeah. earlier that you said you don't know if you would have got to where you are now without the Bikram. Oh, I'm no, I don't think I would have. I would not have. I really there. don't. No, it saved my life. I told someone yesterday who's limping Yeah, saved limping my, you're right. It saved my life too. Saved my life, yeah. Someone's limping That's what Dr. Clapper said to me. Yeah, Dr. Clapper said it saved your life. Yeah. I mean, it's, it did. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that's I, that's what I remember. <laughs> I mean, uh, because we all suffer from exercise deficiency. And when you yes. do Bikram yoga, it's not just doing a little bit. It's basically saying, oh, I'm like a super athlete or something. And you don't have to actually go and schedule training. And if you're disabled, no. you, you can go into the class. Um, I remember when you first went into the class, I recall you were working with a chair, weren't you? I still am. Right, you still are. I don't care. Oh, yeah. still, oh, well, just to, just during the bow, the yep. standing bow for some balance. And just just to, if I need to put my hand there, and sometimes during a um, couple of other poses, um, yeah. like yeah. the one where you put your arms like this. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I use it you? sometimes. I might yeah. like waver. You know, yeah. I lose my balance a little bit. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, yeah, there's a couple of my use, and they don't. He doesn't care. Yeah. I don't care. Other places, though, will not allow chairs. I know that. They they do. Yeah, it can be a little they, bit. They kind of they think of me as their miracle. I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, you are. You are. Well, let's <laughs> let's save the rest of that for our next call. I want to okay. talk about. You've covered Dr. Clapper. I wanted to um, cover a discussion about him in this uh, in our chat because um, I wanted to make sure people understood that he's your uh, he's your go-to doctor and that other people yeah. can have that have him as their go-to doctor and there is no greater opportunity right now from as far as I can tell than than seeking out Dr. Clapper as your mm -hmm. as your doctor from wherever you are in the world and then we're learning from you to uh, to get to Bikram Yoga so that's a great combination now how did you go with all of the foods you had some um, food sensitivities to some of the basic uh, items in um, my elimination mm -hmm. process. So I just want you to talk about um, any stumbling blocks that you might have had with our program and if so, okay. how you worked around them. So if people are feeling discouraged because they may be not feeling perfect after a, you know, a month or mm -hmm. two, what, what, were there some things that you sort of felt were a stumbling block and how did you work around them? Mm. Well, I started with that two-day fast, the celery and the cucumber that was kind of tough you know and, and I got so nauseated by this end of the second day that I contacted you and you said it's okay you can move on you know so I moved on just to the food I just couldn't take it anymore yeah. I think I would have done better on water I think maybe okay it's very detox just from my own personal juices. experience but mm -hmm. I did as best did the best I could so so that's that's the beginning people the best you can do is what you can do you know <laughs> and then I then I had the I did, never mixed the quinoa and the buckwheat. I ate them separately. 
Okay. And then I felt like the buckwheat somehow was bothering me, and I, I never, I still can't put my finger on it. I'm gonna retest it again in the future, but I finally just got took it out. I thought, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's like, I, I went by gut feeling a lot, how I felt, and I watched like, like I, the other day I mentioned like a hawk, but you're relaxed. You just watch. You like notice little whatever when you eat something. And then I didn't quite do your vegetable thing because I'd already been eating two pounds of non-starchy veggies a day because I, you know, I was like hooked up with Chef AJ and I didn't want to stop that. So you said I could do that. So that was kind of my way around it. I did not want to give that up because it helped me so much with my brain chemistry. It's like it reduces cravings like for sugar and whatever else you're addicted to. Yeah, tell us about it. Explain a little bit more because we've not covered it in any other episodes. It's something that you do. I don't know anyone else doing it. Yeah, well, Chef AJ believes that you know sugar, sugar, oil, and salt are the evil trinity. <laughs> okay. So they they cause you if you can become addicted to them and she was addicted to all three. So she started this program Ultimate Weight Loss which I joined like 2 months before I found you because I just loved her. I followed her and she was just she'd lost a bunch of weight and she was so healthy and I just really liked who she was. So so I was doing the I was already doing the 2 pounds of and I and of course I was doing Dr. Clapper said two cups of steamed kale a night. And I had to do two cups. I couldn't do one cup. I had to do two. <laughs> so I didn't want to give that up. So you let me work around that. I emailed you and said, well, I don't want to give this up. And you said, that's fine. And I was really appreciated that because that has, I mean, the more vegetables you can eat, the better you're, you're going to feel. It's like they do something to your body. They make you, you're not, then you forget about your cravings for sugar and w I know there's people on the forum that have cravings. I don't have those. I just don't. I mean, I, I think maybe I get them because you guys on the forum are talking about it. Then I kind of <laughs> think, well, maybe, you know, but then I, then I just stay, then I let that go. <laughs> so, yeah, that's so anyway, great. I'll get back to what I was doing. I, you know, I just, and what do these I did that 12 look like? days. I did the 12 days and I, and yeah, about, one thing about me is I'm like rock solid. I do not waver. I do not eat a piece of chocolate. I do not eat sugar. I do not eat. The only thing I do is have a, a little pinch of salt on my food because Dr. Clapper said I could. Mm -hmm. That's what and I And so I'm too. just, here I am talking about the beginning of the program. So yeah. I followed your thing. And then uh, day 13, I wanted something else. So I tried oranges, which were fine. And then, you know, I... Then day 17, potatoes. I just love potatoes, and I know, I think you're worried about the nightshade family, but they don't do anything to me. No, it's like they don't, I'm, they don't I do love them. They don't do anything Dr. to McDougal about. Dr. McDougal loves them. It's like, yeah. <laughs> they they, they're very satisfying. Oh, potatoes they, are the great, the greatest, especially. So I, yeah. Here I went around, I went around your thing there a little bit, you know. I was like, I put my boat around that one. <laughs> and then you kept saying, try the brown rice. Is it miso or miso? I never. Miso. I say miso. miso. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I failed on that one because I just felt so bad. I cannot eat soy. I. It just does something to me. I just had. It's like I plummeted. I ate it, and then that night I plummeted and down in yeah. my mind as something. I just can't tolerate it. So, I think other people out there, can't tolerate certain things. Well, mine is soy. <laughs> yeah, and that's. So I just it, it, said, okay, I can't do that one. For concerned listeners, uh, normally the miso, even if it comes from a soy base, I, I encourage people to get brown rice miso. But n most of yeah. the time, the brown rice misos also have a soy component to them. And yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, um, normally even people who are sensitive to soy can handle the miso because it's been fermented for so long. I mean, most of the... Uh, the structures yeah. of the uh, food have been broken down into the small constituents that normally don't um, upset the uh, the body in the same way that if you ate soy um, in its unfermented state do. But you reacted just to that, and that's great that your body gave you instant feedback, so you know to avoid that, and that's fine. Yeah, and, then um, I, went on, I went on to like uh, basmati rice, but then I just thought, I want to get some more nutrition, so I, I found the organic white sushi rice, which I love that. So I did that for 
quite a long time. And so, you know, every then I seem to do well with all the pretty much all fruit except for pineapple. Like my both my knees swelled up. <laughs> Amazing. So I mm. I have to try that again in the future. Mm. I think And then, you know, yeah. Yeah, the message here like because because your experience uh, everyone's experience is unique. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the thing yeah. here. Um you know, you're fine with potatoes. I was fine with potatoes after a long time when I reintroduced it after maybe 12 months after I was, you know, I'd, I'd already introduced, uh, you know, white, white rice and, and, mm -hmm. and potatoes for a long time later. But, um, but you know, it, it, it is, this is why it's a reintroduction process. There is no two people that have the exact same gut, the same history with their medications, the same stress response in their gut, the same exercise regimes, the same environmental mm -hmm. pollutions where they live, the same amount of sleep each night, you know. Mm -hmm. And so no two people have the same exact uh, dysbiosis in the gut and therefore have the same exact food solution. So, you know, I think uh, your experience is, uh, is excellent because you've got great uh, feedback instantly from foods that you couldn't eat and that was very powerful. For me, I used to find the reactions happened within about eight hours. Were you something like that as well? Well, you know, I had trouble with seeing what was doing, what was, if it was causing my swelling or not, and I couldn't figure it out really. I mean, I, I really, I mean, I just kind of went on gut instinct about the buckwheat and onions. I felt like something was funny about onions in my mind. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> figure it out but I, they just didn't I couldn't seem to they weren't working for me so I left them out so sure, sure. but then you know I, I just uh, I go off this subject a little bit it's like I tried oats at a certain point and then I couldn't tolerate them but now I can eat them I tried brown rice at a certain point and couldn't tolerate them at first and now I can eat that I mean yeah, yeah. so let's, see there's like a big change let's talk about with that. the food but no 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 that yeah. What that is, and Andrea and I were just discussing this, and I don't know if we discussed it on or off the call uh, on our last podcast, and it's, I hope we did it on the mm -hmm. call because it's a really important point. So there's a, there's, a, there's a period at which your body graduates beyond the basic foods and then has an ability to handle those uh, a little bit more challenging foods. So mm -hmm. we know from the scientific studies that cereal grains are one of the most uh, aggravating things for people with RA, which is why uh, mm -hmm. people go off and try absolutely absurd diets like paleo and just eat lots of meat and fat because they hear, oh, you know, grains are bad for arthritis. Well, they can be, but the meats and the dairies are, you know, equally or doubly as worse. So it's not a matter of avoiding plant foods just because cereals are implicated. It's about... Mm -hmm healing the gut so that at a later point a healthy food like oats can be then tolerated by the gut it's the same um, with the um, <clears throat> uh, um, with the uh, brown rice now with the brown rice um, it's less of an, uh, an immediate offensive food for people with the rheumatoid arthritis but it's more acidifying for the body than the white or the basmati rice which is one of the um, uh, you know, I must be the only person who works in trying to um, uh, heal people with plant-based nutrition who thinks that you should be using white or basmati instead of brown for, for, for your program. <laughs> but I'd, I'll yeah. defend that for, till, for the rest of my life until I, unless I learn something different. But right now, um, it's because the, the, the body is very overly acidic when you've got rheumatoid arthritis. The synovial fluid has a, has a lower pH or a higher acid level, and we've got metabolic acidosis. And we are not able to tolerate the brown rice, which is more acidifying than the white, but less acidifying than meats and dairy, um, until a later point, until we graduate to that, and our gut has healed more, and our, our acid alkaline levels have found their balance. And, um, and then it's a food that we can enjoy from that point on. And I, and I said to Dr. Clapp, I explained this to him as well. <laughs> and, and, and he laughed because you can see the level of detail that I've been give, I've given oh, this. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's just like, you have put so much into this. I said, this was my life. This is my life. <laughs> um, and I, and, uh, That's and, how I feel about me. Yeah, I feel yeah. that about myself. It's like I've put so much into this. 
I'm not giving up, you know, and it's like I'm that's gonna right. keep going. And it's and it, and it, it you know it, and it's exciting because progress is motivating. And then you uh, find that people uh, are motivated because of you and you influence positively people around you. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, there's a knock-on effect that's very rewarding um, when we give ourselves a greater purpose than just trying to reduce some pain. We're on a mission. This is a, this is a hobby yeah. that has benefits, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm on a mission. <laughs> that's true. I, I love what you said <laughs> earlier on. You said a gigantic desire to get well. I love that, and we might. I do. We might I make still that. Have the, that. We might make that the title of our um, of of this, <laughs> this this episode. It's like it's so strong that it. I won't make. I'm not making the mistakes with the food at all. You know. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. So the only way I can make a mistake is if the restaurant screws yeah. me up. You know, which. That's right. Which they don't. They haven't yet, except for the recent one where they. I think maybe they had something I didn't want in the yeah. in the broccoli and the mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's uh, we we do become those people at the restaurant that has the funny demands that the chef has to put up with, but it's yeah. worth it because who wants to have uh, who wants to have any repercussions when you when you're doing Bikram yoga every oh, second yeah, day and you're good. eating, you, you know, you, <laughs> you know, you've got you've you, it's not worth it. So let's, oh, tr- let's yeah, you know, people don't realize this disease is so difficult and it's, it's lonely. You know, I'm so, I'm so appreciate we have this forum to talk to people that have other people that have this because this is not an easy thing to have. I mean, it's like no one understands, no one gets what we're going, what I'm going through, you know, I mean, they can sympathize, but I'm telling you now when people look at me, they say, you look good. Or they say, you're doing, you're doing something right. You know, it's like they go on, you know, you're looking good, Ellen. And that's all I hear. You know, I don't hear Oh, you know, what's wrong? You know, you don't look so good. Blah blah blah. I don't hear that anymore. <laughs> no, you do look good, all right. And I'm and, on a roll right I, now. <laughs> I always laugh. I always laugh because your postures in in class now are getting better than some of the uh, the young people, aren't they? Oh, I know. It's funny, isn't it? <laughs> that is just so good. So the teacher thinks that's funny. <laughs> now, let, let's let's just wrap this up. We've covered um. Sure. We've covered your story, and I'm glad that we've gone into a lot of depth with your story because I think there was some bits of information in there that we wanted to explore a bit more. And I think listeners uh, have have heard a lot of stuff from us in previous episodes, and it's good just to to go over some of the more finer detail of uh, of okay. some of the things that you covered. So we've we've done that. Um, I wanted just to check. Um, where are you at now with your medications uh, that are required? Oh, yeah. Yeah, where are you, where are you at with well, what you see, need? Well, let's see. I got on the, the Patterson program, and then um, the inflammation, you know, I what happened was I, I had that inflammation in December 2014, and then I didn't get the lab till like, February 2014, and which was – the inflammation was way up. So I went back on methotrexate, 18 – no, I think it's uh, – I was on 20 milligrams once a week. And then sulfazalazine, four pills, which are 500 milligrams each, and then folic acid to, for the methotrexate side effects. And that was what I was on. And it, it started to work immediately. You know, I, I'm a fast responder with methotrexate, and I've heard other people aren't, but it works well for me. So, But I talked to my doctor, and this time I said, Let's, let me get off the sulfazalazine this time. Last time I tried to get off the methotrexate, and I and it, I bombed out. It didn't work. This time I'm going to get off the sulfasalazine. I don't think it's doing anything. And sure enough, it wasn't doing anything because I got off, you know, now, I, you know, soon I got off, you know, two pills. And then I got off all of it, you know, like maybe, a few, I don't know, three or four months ago. I got off all the sulfasalazine. I thought, God, it's been so long. 14 years of that drug or whatever it was, I'm off of it. I'm on the right track. So then... You know, my lab continued to be got it continued to be okay. Plus, I have no anemia, which is pretty fantastic considering I've had borderline anemia the whole time. You know, <laughs> pretty much. And so down now, I'm down to 50 milligram, 15 milligrams of methotrexate, and so I'm due to go down again May 25th if my lab is okay, which I'll get soon, and which 
I'm feeling so good. I don't see how it couldn't be okay. I mean, and then now, now I, I do get these bouts of uh, fatigue. I, I would, after looking at Mark's um, journal entries, he gets the fatigue too. I think maybe it goes with Bikram. It does yoga. I don't know. Yeah, I'm but I combat sure it, it with that. I combat it with one fourth teaspoon of turmeric, just mixed with potato or rice, and it usually works. It usually, uh, or sometimes I have to do two times one quarter teaspoon of turmeric, but it brings me back. I the fatigue goes away and also it worked on my hand swelling because I had like a swelling like right here that sometimes comes and goes and tumor immediately I'm talking I eat it it's gone it's that quick brilliant <laughs> so I'm glad I have that remedy <laughs> do, you, do you put it with the black pepper no I don't do black no, pepper just, yet I don't know turmeric in, just, in with a meal it's a little bitter but yeah. it's I just eat it okay it's not that bad good good <laughs> okay. Well, so now down. I'm like, now I'm headed. I'm headed toward getting off all the medication again, you know. And this time I'm following Hannah. I'm gonna. She told me for a year now she's been on. I don't know. Two point five. Maybe five or two point five milligrams two, or something. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. do that too, to see if I can beat this this time. Yeah. Because it it took you three years to get well. Well, now it's already been three years for me. So pretty much so. True, but uh, I didn't have the disease as long as you. Yeah, I think that's probably yeah. it. <laughs> and uh, and I was yeah. on uh, more of an elementary elementary diet for a longer period of time. I just kept on uh, those baseline foods and didn't expand on those for a long time. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's probably a lot of other factors uh, going on. So don't compare yourself. I've found throughout my life whether it be... No, but you're my these... hero. Of course I'm going to compare <laughs> myself to you. <laughs> that's not... <laughs> We're colleagues, we're colleagues. I've always found that, um, you know, comparison is the quickest way to feeling upset about yourself. I've, I, and especially with... Uh, Maybe it's a different word than... Uh, you're like... A ins or inspiration. Such maybe. an inspiration to me, like a huge inspiration. Awesome. If he's done it, yep. I've got... There's hope for me, I can do it. And people out there, you have to have faith this program's going to work. It's working for me, it's work for Hannah, it's work for Danny, it's work for Andrea, it's working. And yeah, you're at the beginning of the program, but you just got to stick with it. If you don't stick with it, you're not going to get the results. So that's my pitch. Yeah. <laughs> and you got to move that body. The body's designed to move. Oh, yes. Exercise. Yes. Yeah. Bikram yeah. yoga. You got to go try at least once. Yeah. See if you can stand it. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much, Ellen. It's uh, it's oh, been a great you. it's been a great chat. And I know that um, uh, a lot of people would have gotten a lot out of this. If I could, if I could describe you to someone else and if people haven't already gotten this from you um, Ellen has an ability to uh, to stick with something and to apply actually really good scientific um, common sense and, a, and an elimination uh, mindset that means if something's not working she's changed it and if something's improved she sticks with it and mm -hmm. the improvements that you've made with your diet you've continually tweaked over the about a year year and a half that we've known each other so that you've made your own slight modifications here you've uh, you've in, you've you've discovered a few things here that that are working for you as you said like the veggies and um it's just a, an attitude of never give up and your ability to go to yoga every second day or four mm -hmm. days a week as you said is, uh, oh, is, yeah. is outstanding. I mean, that's the level of commitment that you've mentioned, like, for instance, Danny earlier, and uh, Andrea did a 30-day challenge. She did 30 classes in a row. What oh, I want, what I I want people... Yeah, as you're listening to this now, <laughs> in your car or walking or, or at home or whatever, the message is that it's up to you to get out of the couch or to, to get into the gym or to get to... But you must apply your body to this project you must move the body you must get exercise and mm -hmm. you must get a ton of it so that's uh that's yeah really sometimes good. sometimes i don't want to go to bikram yoga i don't want to go at all and i think well you better go you know otherwise you know you're not going to get well i mean i i have those thoughts like to try to hold me back or or I don't want to see that the lady teacher or whatever. one time I drove through the parking lot because I saw her car you know because she, she likes it so hot <laughs> <You did laughs> hoping she wouldn't see me you know 
I mean, you have to just get past some of these mind games that happen in your mind, you know, just, and, and then other times when I'm too fatigued, I don't go. I just, I go a different day. That's like, I'm going to go tomorrow morning. I'm going to go the next two mornings because I had yeah. fatigue Wednesday, couldn't go, you know, or, no, it was last night, I think. So, yeah, you have to kind of work around your body sometimes doesn't, won't let you do it, you know, but you find a way to get there anyway. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And how's how's life now? Like the uh, overall, you've got you you you're great with your grandkids, aren't you? Now, you, as oh, you said, yes, you can pick good, them up. Yeah. Tell us what life's like now that you've implemented all of the work that you've done over the last couple of years. Well, life. Is, I'm very busy, it, and a lot of it's dedicated to cooking the food. You know, <laughs> with my pressure cooker, or I steam my veggies. In the morning, I I wake up and I. I start my oatmeal and my, my instant oatmeal with my grated apple and then I go on to making my brown rice and some raisins in the pressure cooker and you know I just I spend the morning kind of cooking uh, somewhat and then get that out of the way and then I, um, I on the forum you know having fun with what, listening to people's problems and see if I can help them <laughs> and then you know I, I'm just, and I help my mother, my 93 year old mother, Celia. How about that? A couple times a week. And I'm just, I'm, and I'm a very busy Grammy. I'm, you know, I see them Monday through Friday, for like from 4 to 6 30 at night or whatever. And so, and I love those kids. I, you know, I'm just happy. I'm a happy person now. I'm, and I, I feel better about myself. I'm standing up straighter and, and I have more confidence. I was, pretty pathetic before really my first Bikram yoga class they said I they could not believe that I would come back you know that one the lady teacher says I can't believe you she said I you know I don't know what you're doing here I didn't think you're coming back she she thought I didn't hear her but I heard her you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. that's funny well <laughs> Uh, we are going to uh, chat again very soon. We've got another uh, yeah. time scheduled with yourself and uh, the now famous John, the yoga teacher, who I'm really looking yeah. forward to, to chatting to. So uh, we're going to have yeah, you again wonderful. on another episode shortly. We're going to talk all about Bikram Yoga. We're going to learn about how you managed to keep going each day, the transformation that you had through the uh, through the process. We're going to hear your, your journey from start to now. Um, both in your version and his version and get all the insights from John because John actually uh, learnt directly from Bikram himself. Yeah, he sure did. He was one of the first students. So it's going yeah. to be uh, uh, exciting for me and um, we're, uh, <laughs> we're going to have a bit of a laugh in that one as well. So, uh, oh, I'm sure you will. So stay on the line uh, just for a moment once we, uh, once we say goodbye here and, uh, and you and I can, uh, can have another little bit of a chat after we've stopped recording. So thanks very much, okay. Ellen. Thank you for everything. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your help. It's been a godsend to me, and, and I know you're helping all these other people. And just, you just have to embrace all your knowledge. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs>